hey guys. I am in Aberfoyle in Scotland and uh, I just grabbed myself a coffee and a sandwich because it's lunchtime. I'm going to go up Craigmore, which is the peak that sort of overlooks Aberfoyle. Um, I'm struggling with uh, my back injury at the moment. It's very, very painful. So I'm just doing little walks, but I managed to get up Ben Ann this morning. And hopefully once I've had these guys, I'm going to get up Craigmore. Feeling all right, but just want to make sure I'm resting up as well and soaking up some sun at the same time. Cheers. Whoops, navigation's not going to plan today. Um, I'm using this one, Loch Lomond and the Trossachs, and I went the wrong way out of town. Whoops. <laughs> not blaming the guidebook, that is entirely my fault. All right, let's try this again. I think we're up here. Here we go. <laughs> kind of makes sense because Craigmore's over there. Pretty excited about this. There's uh, clouds moving in, but they're very high, so we should be good. It's a very busy place out of foil. Loads of motorbikes. Here we go, look, the pavement ends. The road continues. And just to the right, there's some steps up into the woodland. That is our path. So I'm gonna follow this. I'm actually gonna reverse the route in my guidebook. I wanna get up to the top first and then find the waterfall on the second half. Uh, but first, I need to take my jacket off. Wildly overestimated the coldness. It's warm. <laughs> Look at this, blue bells are out. Just, this is gonna be good. This is gonna be good. Jeez, just the woodland when there's blue bells. Such a good, beautiful, soft, fragrant smell. I'm pretty sure I need to go that way. The lodge is just up there. I'm not too bothered about going to look at that, but there's a nice pond. So I thought we'd come and see the pond. Then I'm gonna U-turn and head down to the main road. And hopefully there I can find the cut up to the summit. Try not to get run over. I think we can manage that. Here we go. This looks like a very cool path. That is an amazing tree. <laughs> In fact, all of these are. Almost looks like Cecil Oak. I don't know if you get that up here. The route climbed up and up until soon I was moving into open heathland, leaving the shade of the trees and birdsong behind. Every direction I looked proved to be stunning. 
coloured lands filling the horizon, and down at my feet, life abundant and colour plentiful. I really cannot get enough of these bluegrass. Honestly, they are gorgeous, so gorgeous. Splashes of blue coating the hillside. In its finest spring dressage. Almost got this dike here. I wonder if this is part of the disused tramway. There is a disused tramway around here um, to do with the quarrying of iron. Uh, sort of helped to found Aberfoyle as a settlement. Oh, and slate. The slate quarries on Craigmore operated from the 1820s to the 1950s and were heavily used during their operational years to provide slate for roofing in the railways and building materials for central Scotland. Nowadays though, Aberfoyle is supported mainly by forestry, tourism and other industry. To reach the summit then, I basically can either cut straight up or do what I'm doing, which is follow this little disused tramway line, footpath thing. <laughs> and uh, there we go then pick up this little track here. That's gonna take me right up to the broad summit on the top. Up until this point, the walking had been relatively mellow. And even though this was one of the steepest climbs up to the summit, it was still pretty steady. This leads me to suggest that if you're new to hill walking and keen to get out, then this circular walk over Craigmore is a great place to start. Beautiful, beautiful landscape here. Just struggling to take it all in. Oh, that's a nice treat. Check this out. See these white puffy plants here? These, my friends, are cotton grass. One of my all time favorite alpine plants. Love them. Cotton grass can be found year round, blowing in the breeze on heath and moorlands. It's a fascinating plant that historically has been used to stuff pillows and dress wounds. And therefore, despite being so little and cute, it's played a foundational role in the development of civilization. Wow, this is gonna be so worth the climb. Spectacular views already. <laughs> Let's keep it moving. like this could be a bit topish. I'm so excited. <laughs> Here we go. Woo! Wow. There's a random bit of rain falling over there as well. Unlucky for some, hey. Mind you, I'm not coke. Oh, geez, there's a whole wall of rain coming. Well, this is it. The top of Craigmore. 387 meters above sea level. And all my life <laughs> is this insane. Check it out. Well, that's the summit and I can see a wall of cloud behind me. I don't know if it's actually going to hit us, but I'm not bothered in the slightest. Uh, and I'm going to start to make way, way back down now. So speedy legs on. Let's get into the woods and see if we can find this waterfall. The sight from the summit paths was phenomenal showcasing that it isn't always the tallest mountains that offer the greatest view. 
Loch Ard, Ben Lomond, the Arakar Alps and the Scottish Lowlands all played equal role in the beauty of the scene. A little bit further, I was soon passing bilberry bushes in full bloom, their little paper-thin pink-red flowers bursting from the branches, hinting at a great berry season to come. Here we are, road, crossing over into the woods. Where does this path go then? Heading off down towards the... Oh, jeez. <laughs> well, that's a waterfall. Let's see if I can uh, drop down here. Well, that's the top of the waterfall. Let's see if we can get down to the bottom. I can imagine, after a lot of heavy rain, that gets pretty epic indeed. As I walked through the forest, I heard some screaming high above me. For a moment, I panicked, only a little later to realise that what I was hearing was go ape, an assault course high up in the trees, with people on zip lines whizzing past. It was highly entertaining to watch, and put a great smile on my face. <laughs> that looks so fun! Oh, might have to try that. <laughs> Here we go, down to the waterfall. Let's see what we can see. Oh wow, that's cool. This was Little Fawn Waterfall, a wonderful gem hidden away in the Acre Forest and Queen Elizabeth Forest Park. With the recent dry weather, it proved to be a peaceful spot, and yet in the winter, it bursts with raw power. Oh, well. I'm in the woods, we've got the stream bubbling on past, we've got to see the waterfall, we got right up to the top of the crag. It has been a really good afternoon. I even got a soya latte, very happy. <laughs> so I'm heading back to Aberfoyle now, I'm gonna call it a day, but uh, yeah, I'm feeling all right. I'm feeling tired, I'm feeling quite emotional because the pain is starting to get to me now. But I'm feeling so humbled and grateful by this beautiful part of the world. And it really goes to show that you don't have to walk <laughs> tens of hundreds of thousands of miles to get to see stunning views and experience just awe-inspiring landscapes. So thank you so much for following along today guys. I hope you've been inspired to get outside and explore your local patch or beyond, don those walking boots and have an adventure no matter how big or small. Stay connected and of course stay wild. See you soon. <laughs> Thank you.